Hi, welcome to APIDoc, your all-in-one collaborative API development platform. This video is designed for those who are new to APIDoc, and I will walk you through its core functions to ensure you quickly grasp the key features of APIDoc. So, we will start by exploring how to make an API call, then move on to designing and developing APIs. After that, we will explore APIDoc smart mock function. And finally, we will conclude the tutorial with an overview of API Docs automated testing and API documentation. So, without further ado, let's get started. After completing the sign up process, when you open API Doc app, you will find yourself on this interface. Now, to make an API call, select New Request, then just paste your URL in and click Send. Now, if the API request runs smoothly, all you have to do is click here and select save as api just give it a name and save that's it api doc will automatically create an api specification for you covering the path parameters responses and examples creating an api specification in api doc is as easy as that it is recommended to save the request as an api because api doc is more than just a platform for sending api requests it's a comprehensive API development platform designed with API design first approach in mind. Okay, moving forward, we will explore how to design an API. At API Doc, we recommend API design first approach. Just now, I demonstrated how to call an API. I will now create a new API from scratch. To do that, let's select new API and enter pet slash ID. Okay, and you can see here the path parameters are automatically detected. Later, the name, like demo, status, tags, and description can be filled in very easily. Then we can start defining our API. Generally, most of the companies will have common data structure like code, message, and data. You can see that my API automatically has it. If you are wondering why is that, because API doc provides a very useful feature called default response template. As long as the template is set, the new API in your project will automatically have it. Now, you may ask the data of each API probably gonna be different. What to do then? You can click here and select schema reference, then select a sample schema like path. So, while defining our API, we can easily refer to some of the commonly used data structure in our API. All you need to do is pre-place them in this schema section so that we can reference them in the API. Now, in the example section, let's click add example and select success case and then just hit this generate automatically button. That's it. A return example will be automatically generated. This example is generated according to the definition of our previous data structure. Let's save it and our API is defined, which is very simple. In one or two minutes, you can define an API specification. The process I just demonstrated is relatively simple. What if my API doesn't have a defined data model? In that case, I can add a blank response here and select this generate from JSON tab. Just paste my JSON in and in the preview section, you will see that a data structure is generated automatically. Press OK to save it. API doc not only supports JSON import. If we create another blank response and go to this generate from JSON tab once again, you will see that it also supports XML, JSON schema, even supports directly import from databases. Here you can select a database connection and select the database table of your choice. This way you can import a table from the database as data structure. Now if you visit the same tab once again and go to manage database connection, here in the database type you will see that API doc supports MySQL, Oracle, ClickHouse, MongoDB, Redis and more. You can also enter a SQL DDL here to generate a data structure. Finally, I can also choose to add response component from here. I can select a reference response component such as 400 or 404. These response components are maintained in this component library. After you are done defining an API, just save it. Now, some users say that they understand that creating an API documentation is very convenient in API doc. But our company uses Swagger to generate API documentation. So what should they do? In that case, you can use API doc scheduled import function from here. Just go to the import tab and select schedule import. From here, you can press the Swagger URL in and select the import frequency like every 3 hours, 12 hours or 24 hours according to your need and press save. This way, you can regularly import Swagger data to API doc 
and then use API docs debugging, documentation, mock, and other functions. Okay, now we will transition to development. We will learn how to bring the API design to life. Once the API is designed, we can start the development process. Hover over to this generate code option in the API specification we define. And you can generate server steps and client SDKs for the entire project. This option supports dozens of commonly used languages such as JavaScript, PHP, Node.js, Python, C++, Go, and etc. You can also configure the coding style from here. So the backend only needs to add the business logic on the basis of the generated code. So after writing the code, we can start smoke testing. Now let us switch to run. Here you can set the parameters and it's sent. But if your API body is a JSON, then it might be a little complex to put together manually. Now this is where the API docs magic happen. You can simply click this generate automatically button and it will appear automatically within seconds. Next, let me show you this insert dynamic value feature. We can select this name and click on insert dynamic value. From here, we can select the data generator option and look for name. We will select the full name and press enter. Now, if we send this API from the actual request section, you will notice that every time I send it, it will come up with a new name. So this has now become a dynamic value. Furthermore, dynamic value also supports functions like MD5, base64, substring, and many other. These options makes it very convenient to use API doc. All right, this is the phase for sending requests. Next, we need to look at the responses. After defining an API, it's crucial to check whether the data returned by the API aligns with our expectation. For example, with this API, let me click send, and you will see that in the right corner, there is a message says that response data differs from the API specification. Now, what does this mean? It's because we have defined the response data structure for this API in advance. So I will automatically have a check against the data the backend server returns. This check verifies if it matches the API specification. So anything that doesn't match the API specification will automatically trigger an error. These minor issues don't need to flow into testing. We can resolve this directly during the backend smoke testing, which clearly enhance the quality of backend code output. Now let me explain another useful feature of API doc. Unlike Postman, where you need to write scripts for your pre and post processors operation, in API doc, most of the pre and post processors operation can be configured visually without scripting. You can just add Postman syntax from this custom script like this. And you can also reference a public scripts that you have written before from here. If you want, you can also add assertion. Just fill in the details here. You can also extract variables which can transform the response of the previous API into environment variables. What's most impressive that API doc also supports database operation. From here, you can select the database connections like MySQL, SQL, Oracle, MongoDB, Redis, and more. Finally, after setting up this API request, simply click Save as Cases. Just give it a name and press OK. Once saved, this will be listed below this API. This is a unique concept in API doc. Since all operation in API doc revolves around APIs and an API can have various sets of parameters, so we recommend saving each set of parameters as an API case during smoke testing. This practice makes debugging easier for future sessions and allows you to easily reference them in testing scenarios during automated testing. All right, we just demonstrated API docs design mode. We recommend it to our most of the users. But if your team is used to writing the code first, then design documentation, switching to debug mode will better suit your needs. Now, let me showcase a brief demonstration of our smart mock function. When the backend is developing the code, the frontend can also enter the development process. But at this time, the backend API hasn't been developed. So what happens when the frontend doesn't have any data to use? In that case, they can use API doc to generate mock data. How to do it? You will find in this API specification, there is a mock area with mock URL. Simply copy it and open it in your browser. Paste it here. 
and you can see our API data is already out. If you refresh it, every time the data will be different. This is a particularly useful feature called Smart Mock. As long as the API documentation is defined, the front end can use this data. Most importantly, there is no need to do any configuration, no need to write any scripts, and the generated mock data is very user friendly. Now, if you need a fixed return, you can go to this edit option and from here go to this mock area and you can just directly select one or write in it. This place also supports customization. Then you can just save it and refresh it here and the mock data will come out as the way you want it to be. API docs mocks function is very rich. In the advanced mock option, you will find expectation, scripts, and many other rich functions. It also supports the cloud mock. Okay, next we will explore automated testing. Following the demo, we will dive into an insightful overview of our automated testing capabilities. API docs automated testing capabilities has undergone an epic progress in recent days. Let me share briefly. In API Doc, if you want to run multiple APIs together, all you need to do is switch to this testing module. First, we create a new test scenario from here. Let's name it and save. And then I can go to this add step option and choose to import from API cases. Here, just select the API cases I want to run and add. Now, if I want, I can also rearrange the order. Next, I need to select an environment from here and click on run. That's it, a test will be generated within seconds. Here's the test report indicating that if each API selected either passed or failed. If it's failed, you can click on here to see the reason. Click on more to see the details, which is very convenient for locating the problem. And you can also share this report with your colleagues to collaborate together. Now, if we get back, then for more complex test scenarios, we can also use this function like grouping, loops, cross-referencing from other test scenarios and more. Let's add a wait condition here and change the order. Now, if we run it, the test process will wait for 1000 millisecond after execution before executing the next step. Moreover, we often have multiple test scenarios. And during regression testing, we need to run the entire process at once. In that case, I can click on this root directory level and from this all scenario option, I can select all the test scenarios and batch run them together. This is very convenient and I can just do it with one click. Now, if we get back to our API, here you can switch to CICD option and select an environment from here and just save it. This will generate SLI commands automatically. Now you can integrate them into Jenkins or use API doc CLI to run them. After the API development and testing are complete, it can be released for the other teams to use. We can easily generate an API documentation from this share tab. Just click on new and select a the title, then select an environment from here. Now from this option, you can select to share all the APIs or manually select the one you want and press OK. You can also add a password, select the language and save. After we save it, you will get a link. Just copy this link and open it in your browser. And you will find your comprehensive API documentation here. Each API request will have the request parameter, response data, and more. But that's not all. You can also try it out directly on this page, where you can send the request with a single click. Additionally, it also supports request samples in many languages. If I want, I can also generate a code from here. This option makes it very convenient to call this API. Finally, I would like to show that our API documentation also supports customization. From this option, you can customize the navigation bars, domain, names, and SEO setting, and many other. Lastly, the API data maintained by API doc can easily be exported from here in OpenAPI specification, HTML markdown, and API doc format. Also, if you have a complete API project, from this import data option, you can import the data from OpenAPI, Swagger, Postman, Insomnia, and many other platform. This way, you can quickly migrate the existing projects from other platforms to API doc. Now, if you're using a gRPC architecture, you can navigate to the homepage, and from here, create a new project to select the gRPC project type and easily test the corresponding API.
Also, from here, you can invite the members, select the plans, check all activities of team projects and members, and also change the setting. Finally, I would like to add that API Dog has recently launched iterative branches and performance testing. If you need to use them, please continue to follow API Dog's changelog and help documentation. Okay, this wraps up the core workflow of API Dog, covering API design, documentation, debugging, mocking, and automated testing. Thank you for your time and attention.